A few weeks back, I did a video which was about using a 47 inch long driver shaft. And the idea was to see whether or not, obviously, it made me hit the ball any further. Arguably, no, it didn't. It'll certainly not be going in my bag. It didn't do too bad, but there's one other thing that Bryson uses, which absolutely baffles me. He is, in effect, bringing a whole new dimension to the game, and that is this whole long drive thing. And we're gonna use one of the biggest grips that I've ever seen on a driver today and see what kind of difference that makes to my driving distance. That's a shot on that one. That's huge again, you know. Yeah. Now, if you're like me, you'll have never ever set eyes on one of these driver uh, grips before in your life. And trust me, it is a bit of an eye opener to say the least. It's uh, and it's very difficult to get your head round. So this is the Jumbo Max XL. To put it in some, some kind of perspective, that is a regular grip. We'll probably do some close ups of these. And honestly, it is so alien in your hands. It's it's incredible. Now, my question to you is because you can probably help me out here is this. Why does Bryson use this grip or why does this grip even exist? What is the logic behind it? Because unfortunately, at this stage, I don't even know the mentality, the logic, the science. I have no idea about why this would make any difference to my driver. The only thing I've seen in the past in terms of playing with irons is when you put a bigger grip on, it slightly kills the hands a little bit in terms of less kind of maneuverability in those hands, if you like. So I'm looking at two things today. One, will it take a little bit of movement out of my hands? Two, can I actually hit the damn thing? And three, and I very much doubt it, will it make any difference to how far I actually drive the ball? So I need to get up and start hitting some balls, I think. Right, so this is absolutely zero science from my perspective because I like to understand what it is I'm trying to measure against, but I don't. Like I said, I don't understand the logic of this. I don't understand what it's going to do in terms of my distance, in terms of my control. But I'm going to tell you what it's like to play with one of these jumbo grips on a driver. And the first thing you notice is really obvious. It's me relaying something that uh, you can quite imagine yourself. And that is, first of all, it's like holding a baseball bat as opposed to a golf club. And my first thoughts with that are I'm going to have to work incredibly hard with my hands just to get this thing back to the ball at impact. Now, in theory, is that something that's going to mean that it's going to increase my club head speed? I don't know. This is a video more than ever that I'm interested in your feedback down below because, like I said, I've got no logic that I can apply to this. Let me hit one shot first of all. I've had a warm up, I've hit some shots with it. I'm not going to tell any lies, so I know what I'm doing with it, but I'll hit one on camera and I'll give you my feedback on it and see what you think. Right. That's a really decent ball to start with. As you probably heard, uh, it sounded good. Like I said, I'm using a Titleist 913 D3 driver right now. So I'm amazed at the fact that we've even got this in our midst, to be honest with you. But that's the driver I've got. And I'll just have a quick look and a glance at what that did in terms of numbers. Okay, so <laughs> pretty phenomenal start. 240 carry, 96 club head speed, 144 ball speed, launching at 15.1. That's a decent enough start. I mean, let's put some perspective on this. 240 carry. On, in recent months, what we've been recording, my average carry distance with driver will be anything between 235 and 245, I would say, top end. I don't think we've hit anything more than a 245 carry. Um, and that's the current driver I've got in the bag. You're more interested, though, surely, in how that felt. The weird thing is this, when I first put this in the hand, it was ridiculous. I felt so odd. And already, after quite a bit of a lengthy warm up in terms of getting comfortable with it, but when I say warm up, not even hitting balls, just used to it in hand, I kind of, uh, I got used to it fairly soon. Anyway, another ball. Now that one's been pulled down the left a bit. Coming back a tad, 
what I can't understand, and again, this is kind of like, obviously we've got a driver heading that I'd really not want to have. Um, I, I would rather be playing with my driver. I mean, that's saying that's gone slightly down the left. Again, 240 carry, I mean, it's just, and it's the launch that's incredible. It, it's launching the ball incredibly high. Now, this is clearly, this is where the problem lies, is that I've got a driver head in that I'm not used to, and I don't know what it would do if I had a normal grip in hand. All I do know is that I'm launching the ball incredibly high, and I'm playing the ball incredibly long right now. And fairly straight. Please, someone give me some logic on this. <laughs> I mean, that's just gone out of the screws. That's possibly the longest ball I've ever hit on camera. Give me the number. Oh my God, I mean, this is just... That ball has just gone 97 mile an hour club head speed, 142 in terms of ball speed, 248 carry. I think, Han, is that the longest ball we've ever hit on while the camera's been on? Possibly, there's no possibly about it. That's just phenomenal, it's gone straight. What I'm gonna do is, I'm a bit blown away by how far that's gone, a bit confused as to how far that's gone as well. We've never broke 250 in all the days that I've done this, so that's gonna be the next thing, can we break 250? But what is the logic? Why has that gone so long? Has that got nothing to do with the fact that I've just got this weird and wonderful grip on, and surely that's all down to the fact that I'm swinging the club particularly well this morning. I'm still glancing back at them numbers because I'm trying to make some logic out of it. But right now, for whatever reason, we just hit three balls over 240 carry. They've all gone realistically straight. We've certainly found a fairway. I've got a seven-year-old driver in hand and an XL Jumbo Max grip. And I'm baffled. I still in the air, you know. Right, so we've come outside for a bit of a breather. That's our graph, because I've hit, what have I hit there? 10, 11, 12 balls there, and uh, continue to hit balls, because I'm a bit baffled, like I said. I said to Hannah behind the camera that halfway through we just finished that, I wasn't sure I would even like this video, maybe I don't, because I like a video that's got some kind of logic that I can apply at least to it, and I'm trying to sort of prove something, and the fact that we're uh, struggling a little bit to get any scientific logic behind it does annoy me, but all I can say is report back what I found. I hit the ball incredibly well. I hit the ball incredibly straight and I hit the ball incredibly long. So you can do what the heck you want with the information, but I have absolutely no idea what just happened. That gunshot keeps going off on the background, which is doing me head in as well. But anyway, in terms of numbers, I'll put the lot in front of you now. I'll go through the bottom column that you can see, which is the averages. 96.5 mile an hour, which again is right where I would be. That's no different. That's kind of my average swing speed with driver. 142 ball speed is really good. 238 ball uh, carry is really good. 19 launch is uh, 17 launch is quite high with driver, as is the peak height of 103, and that spin number of 2121 on average again is a real good set of numbers. So if you took those numbers in a modern day driver right now, you'd say that in my hands, with my club head speed, with the way I play the game, they're really good numbers. But in all honesty, there's two balls early on, or maybe three balls early on, 224 and two at 231, which weren't my best. If they were taken out of the equation, that number would probably rise significantly over the 240 mark on an average carry. And the ball in there at, 248 carry which we are on thing it still absolutely baffles me to death um 19.5 launch which was in orbit 113 peak height went was in the air hanging for an absolute age nothing like warrior driver and then spinning at only 1648 i mean that thing 248 it lands and it runs forever and it'll be the longest drive probably i've ever recorded on camera I am, like I said, bewildered. I can't offer you any sort of scientific explanation. I might have been swinging the club incredibly well today. I hit a few drives with my regular driver. I recorded okay numbers, but I didn't record anything like 248. So I don't know. I'll leave it very much open to debate, very much open to the comment section, but using 
an XL Jumbo Max grip probably without doubt I say probably without doubt produced the biggest carry distance that I've ever achieved on a video in all the time we've been reviewing golf clubs and the head that was in it was uh, I think it's about seven or eight year old Titleist 913 it just defies logic doesn't it anyway as ever thank you for watching I'll carry on scratching my head working out whether or not in my next driver I'm going to have one of these grips on because it'd certainly be well worth a try and I would ask again if you've tried it if you've got any logic behind it or if you would be prepared to give it a go yourself I'd, uh, I'd love to hear from you so comments down below thanks for watching hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and uh, I will see you all very soon